you for joining the webinar today. My name is Amanda Jadro, and I'm a Portfolio Analyst with Tricom. As a financial solutions provider to the staffing and consulting industry, it is our philosophy to be an active member in the staffing industry by staying abreast of the ever-changing marketplace. For then, Tricom was pleased to launch the Industry Insider webinar series just to share our expert knowledge and resources with fellow staffing industry colleagues. Our values is to build relationships and be a leading resource to the staffing and consulting firms nationwide. Our presenters today are Mary Jo Heim and Lauren Burkholz. Mary Jo, the Director of Accounting, came to Tricom in 1996 and was promoted to control in 1998. Mary is a certified public accountant and a certified payroll professional. Mary is also a member of the American Institute of Certified Public Accountants and the Johnson Institute of Certified Public Accountants. Mary and team of four certified accountants have nearly a half century of combined staffing industry accounting experience. Her rely upon her accounting knowledge and expertise for financial preparation and guidance. Karen became a member of Tricom Funding's accounting department in 2012. Laura bachelor's degree in business administration, Andrew's degree in accounting, University of Wisconsin Whitewater, before joining the Tricom team. Laura's research and knowledge of payroll tax credits has in the development of Tricom's work opportunity tax credit program. Industry Insider Webinar, Lauren will discuss work opportunity tax credits, including the history of WATC, WATC program requirements, Groups, open for WATC, credit is calculated, TRACOM's Work Opportunity Tax Credit Program. By this session, you'll see just how easy it can be for your staffing firm to reduce their tax liability by using Work Opportunity Tax Credits. If you have questions during the presentation, utilize the chat feature located on the right toolbar. After the presentation, there will be time for questions and an opportunity for you to give us your feedback on today's webinar, including a short with that, I'll turn the floor over to Lauren, who will begin the, with the history and target group. So what exactly is, is the Work Opportunity Tax Credit, or WATC, as it is commonly referred to? The Work Opportunity Tax Credit provides incentives to employers that are individuals from certain target groups, which we'll discuss in a minute. What encourages employers to hire those groups may have a more difficult time finding employment in order to shift these groups from economic dependency to self-sufficiency. Why developed in 1996 as an incentive to employ individuals with significant barriers to employment. Since existence, WATSI has been set to expire nine different times, but has always been renewed. There were four times that the credit actually did expire, but even it was eventually renewed, and the credits were retroed back to cover any period of expiration. There, since 1996, the credit has been available for all periods. As you can see by this timeline, each time the credit was set to expire, it was instead extended. It was not extended until a date after the credit had expired. The extension allowed for retroactive credits the employer could receive credits from the expiration period. Current WATSI is set to expire at the end of this year. However, as history shows, we are confident it will be renewed. I hope this credit is available to you. The Work Opportunity Tax Credit is available for both nonprofit and profit organizations. However, limitations to the credit non-profit or tax-exempt employers can receive. A profit employer may only receive a credit for the veteran target group, while a for-profit employer may receive a credit for any target group. To for the credit, employee may not be a re relative or dependent of an owner, they may not be a majority owner, or may not be a self-employed individual. Discuss the different target groups within WATSI. Target group. A target group is a group of people sharing a common characteristic or characteristics which a particular government policy or agency 
seek to assist. Current are nine target groups an employee might fall into. It are veterans, short temporary assistance for needy families or NF recipients, long term TANF recipients, supplemental nutrition assistance program or SNAP recipients, significant community residents, vocal rehabilitation recipients, ex felons, Social Security income recipients, and summer employees. Now, through specific details as to how to identify certain target groups based on their definitions, characteristics, and requirements for each group. The first group we will discuss is the veteran target group. To get a veteran eligible, eligible for WATSI, he or she must have served on active duty in the U.S. Armed Forces for than 180 days, or have discharged from active duty for a service-connected disability. An employee must not have ended active duty service within the last 60 days if they are active for more than 90 days. The purpose of this requirement is to put unemployed veterans to work. Unlike other WATSI target groups, veterans have subcategories based on each person's particular situation coming into employment. These become important later on when we discuss maximum credits a veteran may receive. Groups in this category include veterans who receive SNAP benefits, veterans who are entitled to a compensation for a service-connected disability, or veterans who are unemployed. The next target group is TANF recipients. Temporary assistance for needy families provides cash assistance to low-income families with dependent children while they start to become self-sufficient. This is referred to as welfare. TANF recipients can fall under one of the two WATSI target groups, short-term and long-term. The reason we differentiate between short-term and long-term here is that there are different lengths of time the credit can be taken based on how long a recipient has been on TANF. To come under the short-term TANF group, the employee must have received TANF benefits for any nine-month period during the 18-month period ending on the hiring date. Long TANF is a little more complicated. An employee must have received TANF benefits for at least 18 consecutive months ending on the hiring date, received TANF benefits at least 18 consecutive or non-consecutive months after August 5, 1997, and has a hiring date not more than two years after the end of the earliest 18-month period after August 5, 1997. We added a few examples to help explain this last qualification. Each example, the new employee was hired on January 1, 2013. In this example, the employee is eligible because the employee received the benefits for 22 consecutive months, which is more than 18 months required, and after 18 months of receiving the benefits, are within two years of the hiring date of January 1, 2013. In example, the employee is not eligible because the employee received 22 consecutive months of TANF but at the end of the first 18 months, they are not within the two years of the hiring date. In example, the employee is eligible. The employee received a total of 20 non-consecutive months beginning on January 1, 1998. January 1, 2011, the employee has received a total of 18 months of TANF. They are eligible because this date is within two years of the hiring date. Last example, the employee is not eligible since they received 18 non-consecutive months by January 1, 2008, We're not within two years of the hiring date. The target group is SNAP, or Supplemental Nutrition Assistance Program recipients. Most people this as food stamps. This program is the largest emergency feeding program program provides financial assistance for purchasing food to low- and no-income people in the United States. In order to be eligible for WATSI, the person must, have, must be between 18 and 39 years old and receive SNAP benefits or be a member of a family that receives SNAP benefits. 
benefits. You must either have been receiving the benefits for the six months leading up to the hire date, or have received the benefits for at least three months, three last five months ending on the hiring date. The next group is the designated community resident. A native community resident is an 18 to 39 year old who lives within a federally designated empowerment zone or a renewal county. The zone is a highly distressed urban or rural community. These zones are continuously changing based on current economic circumstances. For example, after Hurricane Katrina, residents living in areas affected by the by became part of an empowerment zone. Current are 67 cities and counties in the United States that are considered to be empowerment zones. Rural Renewal County is a county in a rural area that lost population during the five periods of, 19, the five periods of 1990 through 1994 and 1995 through 1999. Current are 408 counties located in 32 states. For more information or to see where these areas fall within the United States, please visit the website provided on this slide. Target groups include vocational rehabilitation referrals and found. A vocational rehabilitation referral is an individual with a disability who completed or is completing re rehabilitative services. To qualify for WATSI, these services must be or have been completed by either a state certified agency, employment network under the Ticket to Work program, or the U.S. Department of Veteran Affairs. Felon is someone who has been convicted of a felony. To qualify for WATSI, the individual must have been hired less than one year after the conviction or release from prison. Target group is recipients of supplemental security income. SSI is a federal income supplement program that is funded by general tax revenues. This program is designed to help aged, blind, and disabled people with little or no income by providing cash to meet their basic food, clothing, and shelter needs. To be able for WATSI, the individual must be or have been a recipient of SSI benefits within 60 days prior to the date of hire. And the WATC target group is a summer youth employee. For 2013, to be eligible for WATC, the individual needs to be a 16 or 17 year old work for an employer between May 1st and September 15th live in an empowerment zone. Please explain a bit about the history of WATSI and given descriptions of various target groups, we will explain the process of receiving WATSI credits. Profit organizations receive their WATSI credits as part of their annual corporate tax returns, thus limiting their income tax, whether they're LLCs, S-Corps, or C-Corps. Nonprofit organizations can receive their credits by either requesting a check or receiving a credit on their quarterly payroll tax forms. To receiving the credit is to get a certification from the state verifying that the employee in question is indeed a member of one of the targeted groups. This is by filing an individual characteristics form, an ICF, with this within 28 days from the date of hire. There are questions in the form that will assist the state in verifying the employee as a member of the targeted group. Employees also have source documents that will need to be sent to the state along with the form. They will need to sign the IRS Form 850 certain information they have presented to you. To be certified, additional IRS forms must be completed to receive the credit. First documents required for state approval. Present some type of document proving that the employee is indeed a member of the targeted group. This information will be sent to the state along with the ICF form. You need to present either discharge papers, letters of separation, or a letter from Veteran Affairs. Candidate recipients will present entries, case number documentation, or a letter from an authorized individual describing the benefits and the time they will receive. The community residents will need to provide a driver's license, utility bill, lease papers, or some other documentation stating that they truly live in the empowerment. 
form and so on. The Balotation recipients will need either an agency contract or a letter with an agency stamp stating the benefits were provided. That need to get a letter from Veterans Administration. X will need to provide either a statement or contact information from their parole officer, correct institute records, or records. Some security benefit recipients need to provide either SSI records, an SSI contract, or some type of evidence of SSI benefits. Youth will need to provide either a birth certificate, a driver's license, or school ID, or a work permit, any information that will confirm their age and the fact that they live in the apartment. Once ICF form and have received the source documents, this information must be forwarded to the appropriate State Department of Labor and Workforce Development. Each of approval or disapproval for this certification is between 60 to 90 days. The state questions on the application and may contact you for further information. Once application is received, this employee should be identified so you're able to track their hours, the hours of work. So the credit calculated credit is available for a one year period. The employee must work over 120 hours to receive any credit. If it works over 120 hours but less than 400 hours, then 25% of the employee's wages can be taken into consideration for the credit. If it works over 400 hours, 40% of the employee's wages can be taken into consideration for the credit. For one of the employees, the credit is available for a two-year period. Again, if the employee works less than 120 hours, there is no credit. For the year, if the employee works over 120 hours but less than 400, you receive 25% of for all wages. If the employee works over 400 hours, you can claim 40% for the first year. Further, if the employee works over 120 hours but less than 400, you can receive the 25% credit again. But if the employee works over 400 hours in year two, you can receive a credit equal to 50% of the second year wages. Nonprofit organizations can currently only receive WASI credit for employment and veterans. If the employee works less than 120 hours, there is no credit. 199 hours, your credit can be up to 16.25% of the veteran's qualified first year wages. If it works over 400 hours, up to 26% of the first year wages can be taken as a credit. In the qualified wage percentages I mentioned earlier, each individual can only receive a maximum credit as stated. Be part of one of these additional groups to receive a credit. And a veteran can be a member of more than one group, which allows them to receive additional credit amounts. Veteran is also a SNAP recipient. You can receive up to $2,400. If you hire a veteran who has been unemployed for over six months, you can receive a credit of up to $5,600. If disabled veteran who has been unemployed for over six months, you can receive a credit up to $9,600. Adult credits are based off the previously mentioned percentage of percentage of wages and are further limited by the maximum allowable credits in each qualifying category. Short TANF, you can receive $2,400 maximum. Term TANF, you can receive $9,000 over the two-year period. Recipients, you can receive $2,400. Designated community residents, $2,400. Okay, rehabilitation referral, $2,400. And $2,400. Social Security income recipients, $2,400, and youth employees can receive a credit of up to $1,200. These are limited, but as you can see, if your number of qualified employees were working for you, these credits can add up to substantial tax credits. Track needs to be done generally on a quarterly basis to be able to monitor where each qualified employee is in regards to hours worked. At a year, each certified employee will require individual calculations to determine credits. A Form 5884 or 5884C for nonprofits will need to be completed. For properties, receive their credit with their corporate tax return. If your tax entity is a flow through to a personal income tax return, the credit flow that as well. Nonprofits can receive their credit via a check from the IRS or receive credits on their 941 quarterly payroll form. This seems like a large amount of tracking and paperwork, 
But for those of you who are TRICOM payroll processing clients, this process is much more streamlined. You will need to fill out only two, two forms. The Form 50 will need to be filled out and signed by the employee, and TRI has developed a one-page questionnaire that can be gone through with new hires to determine if they qualify into any of the target groups. TRI will do the remainder of the work and send you the completed 5884 forms for you to your tax account. For more information on TRICOM's WTC credit program, feel free to contact me at TRICOM. Lauren and Mary Jo for sharing your information. Um, we have gone ahead and put the references on the screen for anyone that would be interested in uh, learning more about um, the Work Opportunity Tax Credit Program. I did have one question that came in, and the question was asking if you can go back in time to receive credit. Um, as I mentioned earlier, that the certification process requires you to, to have the certification submitted to the state within 28 days from the date of hire. So you have that 28-day window to go backwards if you hired someone within the last 28 days and you can get this paperwork completed and send it to the state, it has to be postmarked 28 days after the date of hire. If we have any other questions that have come in, um, I've gone ahead and put up both Lauren and Mary Jo's contact information. Please feel free to reach out to them if you had any other questions or were interested in learning more about TRICOM's Opportunity Tax Credit Program. Um, thank you all for joining us in today's webinar. The recording of this webinar will be available on our website at tricom.com slash resources. If you have any questions, please reach out to um, Laura Mary Jo. And more information on our next webinar session, which will be held on October 24th, in to get out of the com rat race, build and market a killer value proposition.